Hello everyone, welcome to the Asane Asylum. Ooh. Yes, it's been a while. It's been a while since I did a talking video. It's probably been up to ooh, probably a year, half a, a year and a half. Yeah, it's been a funny, it's been a funny, it's been a funny couple of months. A bit of a funny old year. Ugh, I don't want to get into details on you. I mean, I mean that's a that's a topic for another video. That's not that's not why you're called. Together. Deep breaths. It brings me sad news that founding member and original guitarist for Public Image Limited, but not a band. Where a company has died. <sighs> I mean, what can I say? What can I say about Julian Keith Levine? I mean, I I probably can't do it justice. I mean, I mean, it's easily. top five most influential guitarist of all time you know his guitar style pretty much has pretty much shaped modern music for the last 40 40 plus years I mean you know his style was often duplicated but never replicated I mean I mean he's easily in my top top five guitarists I mean I I could easily put him at the top of the mountain I could easily put, I could easily put him number one I could I, re, I really can you know I mean his, his guitar style I mean to describe his guitar style for me it's, it's like sheet metal being produced in a in an industrial factory very metallic sort of sound but at the same time I mean not just the metallics I mean there was different tones to his style I mean he could be a very abrasive I mean you listen to you know theme very abrasive you know put that i mean that track pretty much invented post rock you know i mean you know first issue you know i you know groundbreaking fucking groundbreaking album yeah you know some great i mean great tracks on you i mean you know public image you know i mean imagine being a teenager in 1978 and hearing that I mean, I mean, the edge out of you two pretty much aped and built his career just on that one song. You know, he really did, you know. Yeah, you know, and, and pop tones, such a. You know, the guitar work on that is so. You know, it's. You know, a very beautiful. I mean, Bobby Gillespie described it the best. You know, it was you know, such a beautiful melancholy. You know, oh, 
just absolutely amazing he's just absolutely amazing just amazing guitarist you know absolutely absolutely amazing you know those those first three public image albums first issue metal box flowers of romance they're pretty much you know for a lot for a lot of public image fans they're the three essential albums you know the such they had such great chemistry that band you know keith had such great chemistry with jar wobble and john lies and i mean oh, just amazing absolutely it means such amazing music you know you know i mean the fact that john lydon was able to reinvent himself after after leaving sex pistols you know that sex pistols fucking america debacle you know the fact he was able to shred the shadow of the sex pistols it's just absolutely amazing yeah absolutely amazing absolutely amazing i mean you know metal box you know if he, i mean if um if martians came down being down onto earth and you gave them you know the the quintessential post-punk album it would be metal box you know every 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 band after that after that album was influenced by it in whether it was directly or indirectly you know i mean i mean steve albini albini had a big black had a big black you know you listen to that you listen to his guitar sound it's got keith levine's fingerprints all over it and, and he and he's a great producer in his own right as well just just absolutely amazing you just made it just uh, I just, I just, I'm absolutely fucking gutted. I'm fucking gutted. You know, I'm absolutely gutted. You know, and um, and uh, yeah. So, see, I don't, I don't have a history with Keith. I don't have a, a much history with Keith Levine, but he used to live. In my hometown of Newport, about twelve years ago. Now, the Newport Link. Now, if you know your if you know your punk history, Joe Strummer used to live in Newport. So, so there's a connect, and of course Keith Levine was the original member of the Clash, because uh, he wrote uh, "What's My Name." So there's a link there. So I don't know whether he came to newport for that reason or he knew friends here but uh, i used to see keith levine around in newport town i remember one time i was in dylan's cafe many 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 years ago it's not there now i think it's called what's it called now it's, they changed they've, they've changed the name of it cleopatra's or something like that they've changed the name I'm, but um 10 12 years ago it was dylan's and I just and I remember remember I just come from my art at mind and I met my mum in uh, Dillon's you have used to I used to have I used to have um I used to like the bacon rolls in there they were quite nice and um and I seen him walk in now I wasn't sure at first but the only reason I recognized him because Actually, it might have been 2011. Actually, not 2010. 2011, because there was a documentary on BBC Post Punk, narrated by Peter Capaldi. Now he was on there, you know, modern, you know, modern day Keith talking about, you know, he was showing his, you know, amazing guitar at work, pop tones, and I thought, oh, you know, and I thought, nah, it can't be Keith Levine. It can't be. What the fuck was he doing in Newport? See so the walk in. And then, and then, and then the re and then the cafe owner said, "Right, Keith." I looked at my mum. I went, "No fucking way. That's not no fucking way. That's not Keith Levine." And I'm, I'm on the choir. And I'm fucking fanboy, and I'm like, "My mum's," and my mum's like, 
She's like, huh. I mean, she hadn't got a beer, but you know, you know what I mean? She was like, she, she struck her chin like, who's Keith Levine? She's like, who's Keith Levine? And I don't know if he heard me because he sat behind me. She's like, who's Keith Levine? I don't know who that is. Who's Keith Levine? I'm like, just guitarist in a pill. I don't know if you, I don't know if you, or not. I don't really don't know. Point four. God, was this fucking herb? Obviously, fucking herb. Oh, keep quiet, keep quiet. And she went, and 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 then the the cafe only gave him a coffee. Here's your coffee. Here's your regular. Here's your coffee, Keith. Just how you like it. For there's no fucking way he lives in Newport. There's no fucking way. There's absolutely no fucking way. I, I know it. Is, I know it sounds man. It sounds fucking. I mean, it's possible, you know. It's, it just feels surreal, like a, like a person you, you fucking admire, would be in would be in your local cafe. It's like it's fucking surreal, you know. It's like that time I went to Swansea and and Ian, McKell Ian McKellen was was in was in the Warstones. It's like it just, it just it just feels surreal seeing celebrities in the wild, you know. And I was like. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't disturb him because I'm not that type of person that would disturb and go, oh, I'm a big fan, I'm a big fan. I, I'm not, I'm not like that. I, I respect people's privacy, and I, but I, but I was fucking inside. I was fucking fanboy like a fucking, I was fan, fan fucking boy like a fucking King Kardashian fan, you know? I was the fucking, oh, it's, it's Keith the lead. It's fucking Keith the lead. And 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 um. I was like fucking. I was like fucking hell. Because he used to go round. I think he used to go round town. I, I forgot his name. He was a tall, tall, big chap, but like a pirate. I don't know his name. He used to sell. He used to sell tickets for gigs. I don't know his. I don't know his name. Forgotten his name. Forgot his name. But I think I remember going to the. I think it was, what was it at the time in the market? Was it Bedis? No, before Bedis, it was, oh, what was his name? Oh, what was his name? What was his name? Oh, I, for, I forgot his name. It was Rock, was it Rockaway Records? Because I remember, I remember, I remember talking to him and I said, and I said, it's a bloody guy. I said, I said, I said, is Keith Levine living in Newport? And he was like, yeah, it's Keith Levine. I went, I was like, Fuck, you know something. Uh, uh. Do you know what I mean? Two members of the Clash living, you know, that that have come through. I mean, I mean, Newport has a rich musical history anyway. You know, TJs. I don't. I missed, oh, missed TJs, but that's another. That's another. Um, that's for another video. But yeah, oh man. You know, and he did play. He did. I remember he did play a gig. In Newport, I think it was. Oh, it was on Stowell. It was. It was a little. There was a little nightclub on Stowell. It wasn't there long. It was in there a couple. Of, I think it was in there a year or two. I think it was called the Two Hundred Club. I don't. I don't know why I didn't go. I don't think I was well at the time with my mental health. So, so a bit of a bit of a regret there. I would love to. I loved. I would love to just go on there properly and shook his hand and say, you know, thank you for making such such fucking great music you know oh man yeah and I think he I think he moved to the Czech Republic I think after he was, he was in New, he was in he was in Newport a couple of years and I think he moved to the Czech Republic then but yeah he did um I mean he continued to he continued to do music he did some great stuff with Jar Wobble he did Public Imitation Limited which didn't go too well with Mr. Lydon, but uh, yeah, it was gr that was that was great. And he did an EP. That was good, Yin and Yang. And he also did. Oh, hang on, hang on a sec. I get the vinyl. I get the. I got the vinyl somewhere. Um. Oh God. Can find it. I don't know what I've done with it. I 
don't know what I've done with my car seat to fuck. Because I've got um, a very British coup on vinyl, which my dad got for me from the Jar Wobble gig. And uh, yin and yang, I can't see the bloody fun. But uh, yeah, he also did continue to do music. He did, um, was it um, Search for Absolute Zero? It's a bloody good album, a bloody good album. It was on Spotify, I don't know what's happened to that. And of course, people people don't talk about, um, you know, his, his solo stuff. People seem, people seem to think, oh, after Pearl, that was it for Keith. But he, he did some he did some great session work. I remember reading years ago in the Viva La Rock, he did um, guitar work on the Tom Lokes Looked After Dark. I feel that, that, I think I did read that. I'm sure, it, yeah, it was Viva La Rock. And that's a great album, Tom Lokes Looked After Dark. That's an underrated album. Uh, that's a great, that's a great hip hop album. Very underrated, very, un very underrated. Home look. But yeah, and he also did books as well. I got one of his books. It was about um, meeting Joe. How he got. Um, told you about how he got um, Joe Strum out of the one of us and into the Clash. So, it won't f so, so if it wasn't for Keith Levine. Uh, they wouldn't be. A, I mean, obviously, you know. I mean, Mick Jones. But they wouldn't be a. It wouldn't be a clash, like like it would become. You know, it'd have been a lot different. The clash would have been a lot different without Joe Strum. I don't think it would have been as good. You know, that's just my opinion. But yeah, he's. You know, he's the reason that. Um, the Joe Strum, are, they that they got. You know, he's the reason. Most time I got in the clash. And he said in an interview, they did meet on a fucking doll queue. No, I poached him for the one. I was eating meat on a fucking doll queue. Fucking, what's my name? I still don't know my fucking name. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, meat on a doll queue. Yeah, <laughs> meat on a doll queue. Yeah, can you imagine that? Oh, should I have to join my band? Yeah, can you imagine that now? People meeting on a doll queue to join, to join the fucking band. You get fucking stabbed now. You ask somebody to join your band and fucking job sender no, do you want to join my band? <coughs> <coughs> fucking nuts. Fucking Will's gone mad. But uh, yeah, I think I've fucking uh, waffled on enough again. Because you know what my videos are like. Talk absolute shit. But, uh, oh man. You know, I don't need much more I can say really. I mean, you know. Uh, Just my my thoughts with his family and friends. Be interesting. It'd be interesting to see what John Lydon will put up on his Twitter. That'd be interesting. I think Jar Wobbles put up uh, put up something. But uh, yeah, ugh. you know. I mean, what what more else can I say really? I just like to say, you know, thank you, Keith. You know, thank you for all the great music you gave us, and your legacy will will continue on. It really will. <sighs> okay. So anyway, thanks for watching. Oh, don't sm don't smile! You might crack the camera. <sighs> Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Take it easy everyone.